Terry, uh, there's a rumor afoot that the Jewish people, the Israelis, are planning uh, to rebuild the temple, or at least there's a move among them that people want to rebuild the temple. And I was reading today in the book of the prophet Ezra, and I thought it might be instructive because they had a second temple uh, that was built in his day. And here's what it says in Ezra chapter 3. Now, when the builders had laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord according to the directions of King David of Israel. They sang, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness is upon Israel forever. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Yet many of the priests and Levites and heads of fathers' households, the old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, while many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the shout of joy from the sound of weeping of the people, for the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard far away." So that was the building of the second temple. When the, when the, it, the foundation was laid, it was delayed, and they finally finished it. And that was the temple when Jesus was here. So that temple was then later destroyed uh, by the Romans. Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed it once before, then the Romans. And uh, now there is no temple, but there are people who want to rebuild the temple. So tell us about it. Well, on June 7th in 1967, Israeli forces captured the city of Jerusalem in what was called the Six-Day War. After nearly 2,000 years of exile, the Jewish people were close to their dream of a new temple. But that dream lasted just a few days. The Temple Mount was later returned to Muslim authorities, and four decades later, Jews are still forbidden to worship there. But that hasn't stopped some people from making plans to build the next temple. Here's Chris Mitchell in Jerusalem. We dreamed to come back to this place, to the Temple Mount, to meet again our God. The Temple Mount is the seat of God, the place the Lord would choose. Every day, three times a day, Jews recite this prayer. May it be your will that the temple be speedily rebuilt in our own time. It's a prayer they prayed for almost 2,000 years. But Jews here in Jerusalem are doing more than just praying. Just a few steps away from the Western Wall, rabbis and craftsmen are building what they call a temple in waiting. We're supposed to build a temple and nothing about that changed. Nothing about that commandment changed. Heim Richman is a director at the Temple Institute in Jerusalem. The Temple Institute is actively engaged in research and preparation for the resumption of the service in the Holy Temple to the extent of actually preparing operational blueprints for the construction of the Temple according to the most modern standards. This menorah is just one of several vessels created for the next temple. It's covered with 95 pounds of pure gold and has a price tag of two million dollars. Piece by piece, the third temple is taking shape with priest garments, vessels of copper, gold, and silver, and a new generation of Levite priests specially trained for temple service. We have enough in place now to resume the divine service and, and to build the temple. But obviously, a lot of things have to happen in order for this to happen. Richmond isn't the only one who's ready to rebuild. You actually have blueprints Architectural oh, yes. drawings for the yes. third temple. 3,000 years after King Solomon built the first Jewish temple, another Solomon is laying the foundations for the third. From the womb of my mother, I have a task and a mission in my life, which is connected um, with the rebirth of Israel. Gershon Solomon leads a group called the Temple Mount Faithful. They commissioned these cornerstones for the third temple. The six-ton stones were consecrated with water from the biblical pool of Siloam and cut with diamonds. 
And why God um, commanded us not to cut them by iron? Don't forget that these are stones for the house of God. They cannot be um, like other stones. For several years, Solomon and his followers tried to place the stones on the Temple Mount. And every year, they were stopped by Israeli police. Unfortunately, weakness of the Israeli leadership did not allow us to bring the cornerstone to the right place. The end time temple should be built on the same location of the first and the second temple. But that location is already occupied. The holiest site for Jews is also the third holiest site for Muslims. And neither side is ready to share. The Temple Mount, 35 acres of it, is the most explosive piece of territory on the face of the planet. In 2002, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat told an Arab newspaper that the Israelis found not a single stone proving that the Temple of Solomon was there because the Temple was not in Palestine at all. The issue of the Temple, it's so, it's so sensitive. Dr. Yusuf Nache is in charge of tourism at the Dome of the Rock. Here's what he had to say when I asked him about the Jewish temple. It's not uh, an, an undeniable fact. It is true. And the political situation, the misunderstanding, the mistrust distorted all the facts. That is stupid because the Arabs themselves, they call Jerusalem the place of the temple. And the golden dome right behind me, the Dome of the Rock was built in order to replace uh, Solomon's temple. I think this temple denial is more serious than uh, the Holocaust denial. To counter this so-called temple denial, Gabriel Barkai is pushing the archaeological envelope. Muslim law forbids any digging on the mount itself. So instead, Barkai is digging through its trash. We have here the, uh, the entire history of the Temple Mount. He and his team are sifting through truckloads of debris, unearthed by bulldozers and discarded by Muslim authorities. So there, there could be artifacts in here going back to the first and second temple? And Yes, there are, no doubt. Among their finds, a Babylonian arrowhead from the fall of Jerusalem in 586 B.C. and this 2,400-year-old Hebrew coin, the oldest ever minted in Jerusalem. Do you think in your lifetime there will ever be a time when, when you can actually uh, investigate what's under the Temple Mount? No, I don't. I'm very pessimistic about it. Some of the most dramatic traces of Temple life have been unearthed here at the Western Wall. This street was part of the marketplace outside the Second Temple. On the walls, you can still see the marks from the fires that destroyed the temple in 70 A.D. And overturned stones still lying where they were thrown from the top of the Temple Mount by the armies of Rome. On one stone is a Hebrew inscription to the place of trumpeting. It's a set of ancient directions to the southwest corner of the temple where trumpeters announced the arrival of the Sabbath 2,000 years ago. Even more intriguing is the part of the Western Wall that's still underground. Amongst the courses of the Western Wall, I mean the line of stones which we have here, this is the greatest and the most exciting one we have here. Dan Bahat spent 40 years excavating the tunnels around the Temple Mount. And he says the most compelling case for the temple is yet to be discovered. I believe that behind this stone is a large arch which forms a storehouse, a big storehouse which stored all the treasures of the temple. But we don't have till now anywhere where those treasures were. And the only possibility is that it must be subterranean somewhere around the Temple Mount. I believe that it might have been behind this wall. So do you think it's possible that the treasures are still there? Well, I hope so. Maybe in the future when it will be possible to dig, maybe we'll get to there. I say we it must be my grandchildren, the earliest. But Bahat's interest in the temple is strictly in its past, not in its future. There is no chance whatsoever for the third temple. 
The third temple will be when the Messiah comes, and all, both of us, Jews and Christians, are waiting for him. So let us see when he comes what happens. <laughs> it won't happen before. Rabbis for centuries did not understand this and in fact argued, well, are we supposed to build the temple and then the Messiah will come? Or are we supposed to wait and then the Messiah will build the temple? Again, I could hear the voice of God like he's speaking to all of us. I brought you here to build my house. Build my house.